Hi, I'm Meg Taggart, an instructional designer and faculty consultant in the Office of the Online Campus. Beginning in the spring of 2015, with the help of funds from the CSU Chancellor's Office, California State University East Bay introduced the Online and Hybrid Course Quality Transformation Grant. There was overwhelming response to the grant invitation, with 36 faculty choosing to participate in either the Cold or Quality Matters trainings and course review. All our grant participants completed one or more of the QM trainings. Quality Matters, or QM, is a nationally recognized peer review process that is designed to certify the quality of online courses and online components. It consists of three elements, a detailed quality standards rubric, a collegial peer review process, and professional development trainings. We asked these instructors to reflect on their QM experience and how the trainings help them to transform their courses. And here are some of their answers. Campus and department-wide, um, we're in the process of doing quarter to semester conversion. And the quality improvement process provided the opportunity to evaluate the courses to ensure that the course objectives are aligned with the module objectives that meets our institute's learning objectives. The online hybrid quality transformation grant provided me the opportunity to do that with the assistance of the on-campus instructional design team. I am an instructional designer myself and um, I'm the director of the master's program in online teaching and learning. Since QM is the national standard I wanted, to be in, I wanted to ensure that all of my courses are QM certified. My department chair had approached me about teaching online and I had never done it before. Um, and I've always been a little bit skeptical about online teaching. So I decided if I'm going to embark on this journey of, of online teaching, I should probably know what works and what doesn't. And so doing this QM training has been sort of a, a beginner's course for me, so that I know that I'm doing at least the basics when I start out. I've been teaching in the uh, online environment at the higher education level since 1999. I was one of the first people in the Cal State system to teach online. And I am always willing to change and get better at teaching online. So when I heard about QM, it really drew my attention. I'm a new faculty member with the Educational Leadership Department. As part of my new responsibilities, I'm teaching blended courses at the doctoral level. My pedagogy, or my teaching methods, are very important to me. So when I learned about the opportunity to take part in the Quality Matters development, I saw it as a way to build my own pedagogical expertise in online instruction so that I could better provide a blended course experience for my doctoral students. My primary motivation for taking the QM Applying the Rubric course was to learn more about what good online courses consist of and to use this knowledge to improve my own courses. I think that every instructor does her best to present the strongest and most interesting course possible to her students, but we don't always know exactly how to make this happen. The QM Rubric effectively provides a roadmap for this course improvement process. Yeah, well, taking the training itself, you know, it really made me feel more self-conscious about how I teach. So taking the training, I learned how, how I could get bored at some points <laughs> with the online experience. And at the same time, realized, oh, this is where I could make it better. So I realized, um, you know, what it was to be a student in an online course. And I think that really helped me um, to have that experience. The experience with the Quality Matter training was an eye-opener. It dissected every aspect of the course and every level from alignment of the course objectives to the accessibility and usability. I was very surprised at how good it was. I thought it would be just a pushing paper and getting things out of the way. And I learned a great deal right from the start. The conceptualization of course design and course delivery made total sense 
and yet it wasn't cumbersome. It was a really good deal uh, for anybody who wanted to take it, especially for me because I thought I knew how to teach online. And this whole system of QM taught me so much more that it, I really didn't know. What I would recommend to someone who is thinking about or has to teach, set up a course to teach online and they have no experience with it or um, feel challenged by it, this is lays out for you exactly what you should do and the things that uh, you should do to provide value, you know, to, to, to create a, a, a good course online for the students. So it seems to me it's sort of a step-by-step, -step, a, a paint-by-numbers of how to create a very good online learning experience for students. My experience with the QM training was very positive. The Applying the QM rubric course focuses on precisely the information needed to improve an online course and bring it up to national standards. So all of the material was relevant and interesting to me. I also appreciate that the course objectives in the QM course were clear and measurable for me as a student. This made the process of actually meeting the objectives very straightforward and achievable. The first piece I had to look at was course starts here. I never really had a let's begin tab in my course. I assumed people knew where to start. And also I wanted to always, I used to always have the syllabus as my starting point. But I really think that if, after having gone through Quality Matters, if we have different entry points associated with our course delivery, it's easier for the students. So I've been really working a lot on the objectives. Um, so like I was saying before, when I look back at the objectives that I'd had from the beginning, they're very vaguely worded. So a lot of students are going to learn, students are going to understand. So now really going back and taking a look at Bloom's taxonomy and making sure that I'm using those verbs. Students are going to be able to explain, students are going to apply, students are going to synthesize and then I can develop assignments and assessments that explicitly measure those objectives. One of the areas that I wanted to focus on with, on my transformation of my course is to ensure that the course module objectives are aligned with each of the learning objectives and that it is written in a way that is measurable to ensure that learning takes place. Um, so in my physical courses, I always want to make sure that everything that I'm doing is meaningful and has some kind of purpose for the students. And I wanted to make sure that that translated into my online teaching. So focusing on these items, these rubric items having to do with alignment, helped me kind of broadly give my course purpose because all of these items ask, why am I doing this thing with my students? Why am I having them read something? Why am I having them do this assignment? How does this align with the overall course objectives? For one, the alignment aspect of the framework ensures that students have a coherent experience in the course, and they always know the purpose of particular assignments, readings, and activities, and the way that those will help them meet course level or lesson level objectives. Another way it improves the student experience is simply by helping the instructors design an online format that's easily navigated. One of the biggest issues students raise about online instruction is the difficulty understanding what they should be doing, when things are due, or when to turn items in. First, I think the instructor may make it very clear that we should make our Blackboard page very organized, very clear to the student. And even though it only applies to the online student, I mean, online, you cannot see them, so they cannot ask you directly. So for online students, they need to, to go through your Blackboard page in order to find things. If you don't make it organized or clear, they cannot find things. They cannot find help. Well, I think QM improves student learning by helping them tailor the course to their own individual learning pace or pace of learning. Um, you know, students can have multiple access points to look at the material, from a video lecture to PowerPoint to um, looking at other videos about the material to reading 
um, and then coming into class for my hybrid online course to really have it come alive. You know, all of this has been going into their heads and then through the online practice of the QM standards, the material can come alive in class. So I think QM really supports that in making sure students have multiple learning access points. Quality Matters improves students' learning by providing them with the tools to succeed, especially students with disability. For example, Standard 8 ensures that the course has proper accessibility to course materials for all learners. We are now accepting applications for the current release of the Online and Hybrid Course Quality Transformation Grant.